new developments. In the case of the Bay Area family at the center of a two year investigation into discrimination in the home appraisal process, the Austin family has now settled the lawsuit against the appraiser who undervalued their home by half a million dollars. Joining me now is Paul Austin, one of the plaintiffs, and Julia Howard Gibson, supervising attorney for the Fair Housing Advocates of Northern California. Thank you so much for being here, both of you, this afternoon, this evening. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah, thanks for having us. Of course. Uh, Paul, I'd love to start with you, your reaction to finally reaching this settlement. Uh, as many of our viewers have seen in my reporting, this has been you know, two years, more than two years in the making for you and your family at this point. You have testified before the White House, uh, before the appraisal subcommittee, before the state reparations task force. You've had to bear your story over and over again. Finally, yeah. some resolution. Yes, it is. It's a huge step, I believe, in like helping right some of the wrongs um, within the appraisal community. Also for us, it's bigger than just us. This is this is for all the people, you know, who went down this path and path and who's been wrongly um, done because of appraisal bias. So personally, we are thankful, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we can set a standard for appraisers that come behind um, that come up against this. Right? We want to make sure that the 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 buyer or the homeowner, whoever you are, you have rights. You have an opportunity to share your rights, share your story, and then hold people account accountable. That's the biggest thing and the, the most like pressing thing to me and my family is to make sure that appraisers are held accountable for their actions when they come to them lowballing families like they did us. And quick follow up there, Paul, do you feel like this appraiser and this situation was held accountable? Um, I feel like it's a step in the right direction. You know, I, I, I do believe it's a step in the right direction. There's so much more that needs to be done, um, not just in our case, but in other cases uh, also. I mean, we won. So that speaks volumes or we came to a settlement, as they would say. So I think it speaks volumes um, moving forward. And we want to bring in Julia here. Uh, we know that you worked to reach that settlement that uh, Paul just m mentioned. Uh, there was also a settlement and a separate lawsuit with the Austins against the appraisal management company. But I'd like to focus in on the terms of this settlement. The appraiser has to pay the Austins an undisclosed amount of money. The appraiser must agree not to discriminate in the future, attend a training on the history of real estate discrimination and segregation, and also watch Our America Lobald. Uh, what holes have you found in your research that made you realize that appraisers, there needs to be more training for them, at very least when it comes to the history of discrimination when it comes to real estate in this country? Well, one thing is that we've noticed, you know, we we know that it's really the reason that we thought it would be important to have her watch our America Lobald and also um, attend this training is because while there's been a ton of media coverage around this issue, a lot that you guys have done around this case in particular and a lot of in a few other cases that are happening all over the country. Um, and there's been a ton of research that has come out recently as well. There's been a, there was a big Freddie Mac study where they looked at um, appraisals in the home purchase loan context and found that appraisals um, in Black and Latinx neighborhoods and appraisals and homes appraisals of homes owned by Black and Latinx homeowners um, were more likely to be undervalued, to be valued lower than the purchase price than homes owned by white uh, homeowners. And so, despite all of that media coverage, all of that research. Um, we find that there's still been a lot of pushback in the industry and a lot of appraisers still don't believe that this is happening. And so we thought it was important to make sure that, um, you know, we think it's important to make sure that appraisers are getting training on this issue and that they're learning about the specifics of individual communities, because that has so much to do with, you know, the history of different communities has so much to do with um, the systemic reasons why this is happening. Um, but also we think the documentary is really important because it highlights, you know, three specific stories that really um, show how this is happening in a personal way. Exactly. To show that these just aren't numbers on an appraisal, you know, numbers in a, in a, a forum or something like that. These are real families and there are real impacts to these low ball appraisals. And Paul, we mentioned everywhere that you've told your story in front of the White House, the state reparations task force, the appraisal subcommittee in the documentary, Our America Lobald. 
and now there's this settlement agreement. How do you hope your story continues to affect positive change? I mean, it, it's it's gaining ground so fast. You know, hopefully we'll start to see some sort of government oversight committee that will come in place to really um, educate and also hold the appraisers accountable. One thing that we always talk about is, you know, we didn't know that we had rights um, as homeowners with our appraisal coming in low. So we wanna make sure that folks can be educated to be to understand that they do have rights when if they feel like, you know, they're being lowballed. And to be able to be vocal and know who to contact when something like this happens. So this is just like a start and hopefully it will snowball into something greater where then we can really see true, true change when it comes to appraisers lowballing um, individuals or families like ours. And Julia, while the issue is systemic, as you've noted, and as we've shown in our America lowball, there is recourse by individual families affected by appraisal discrimination. You, you said that that was a, a point that you wanted to make clear by reaching this settlement agreement. Yeah, I think it's really important because this is sort of one of the first cases of this kind to settle, and we want people to know that this can result in a positive outcome, that you you know that this is a systemic issue, like we've been saying, and that there needs to be some top-down policy changes. But also, if you feel like this has happened to you on an individual level, there are things that you can do. You know, we're so pleased that Paul and Tanisha reached out to us and that we were able to partner with another local law firm, um, Brinkart and Brinkart, and able to bring this lawsuit. But, you know, there are fair housing organizations all over the country. And so if you think this has happened to you, you should definitely reach out to your local fair housing organization where you can reach out to us if you're in our area. And that website right there on the bottom of your screen, fairhousingnorcal.org. You can also find all of this information on lowballed.abc. Paul Austin, thank you so much for joining me. And of course, Julia Howard Gibson, supervising attorney over the Fair Housing Advocates of Northern California. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. And you've done a wonderful job of pushing this story forward and helping create change. So I owe so much to you and to our lawyers that worked on our behalf. So thank you. Thank you so I much, agree. Paul. Oh, you <laughs> both are so kind. And again, we do want to mention Paul and Tanisha's story, a part of our documentary, Our America Lowballed.